Hello and welcome to this video tutorial from ComputerGaga.com and in this video we are going to look at how we can import multiple pages from the web with one query into our Excel spreadsheet. So the previous video I did a couple of days ago was about importing data from the web. Nice and simple. But in this example, in this website, I would like to import multiple pages. So this is Box Office Mojo and we have the weekly box office. And you can see along the top we have links for years, lots of them. We'll keep it simpler in this example and maybe just focus on the last five. But this table we can see of the weekly box office data, I would like not just for 2019, but 2018, 17, 16 and 15. And with the potential to update, because this is going to update obviously every week. So let me start by taking a copy of the URL at the top. And in our Excel spreadsheet, I'm going to begin by building up a little URL table. So if I zoom in on this spreadsheet and I'm going to paste that URL I just copied into cell B2 and let's quickly set up a little table of year URL. I'll make those bold and the first year in that list is 2019 if we're going to look uh, backwards and I might just type 2018 underneath that, select those two and drag it down so that we've got the last five, could easily go further. Now we've got this link in cell B2 at the moment. I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to click the clear button and clear those hyperlinks because that's going to frustrate me. And then I'll just use my format painter button to quickly get rid of the look as well. And if I go inside B2, we're going to turn that into a quick little formula to concatenate that first bit of the string. And where we've got 2019, I'm going to change that to a reference to the year. And then concatenate that back to that last bit of string. So I'm creating a URL. The important thing here when we're doing importing from multiple pages like this using this technique is that there is some consistency in the URLs. And we can see here that the URLs are exactly the same, just we have that year in there. And if I can change the year to whatever I want, then we've got ourselves a URL. So if I press enter on that and copy that down, and here we go. We have now the URL for each of those years. Just gonna widen that column and put this into a table. Format as table, let's choose that lovely one. Okay, and let's give it a name. We shall call it URLs. Excellent, got ourself a table of URLs. Now let's import our first bunch of data. So I'm going to take a copy of that first URL, but any URL would work for this. And data tab from web. This is going to connect for us and I will paste with control V the URL and click OK. This will now connect to that web page and show us a preview asking us what data we want. And table zero, as I click on it, you see the preview on the right, that's the one I'm after. So I'm going to click transform data at the bottom, so that it takes me into the Power Query editor, and I could make some modifications to this if I wanted. One modification I might be interested in making would be the table name on the far right. So I'm going to change that to movies. Nice simple table name for now. Everything else I'm quite happy with. I'm not going to focus too much on the editing of this table. 
but if you're familiar with Power Query, you'll know the, the sheer volume of what we could do. I'm going to just close and load this too. The existing worksheet, I'm going to put it as a table just next to the information I have in the URL table. And if I click OK, there is a quick simple import at the moment from just one of those pages. Let me zoom out a bit on this now. And you can see the query on the right, 26 rows. Really, really good stuff. But what we want to do is edit that so that it can do all of the pages that we ask of it. So I'm going to right mouse click on the query on the right and choose edit. And we're going to turn that query into a function. So I'm going to click on the advanced editor button at the top so that we can see the steps from our query. And I'm going to write something above this let statement. So I press enter a couple of times, move into that space. And I'm going to type an open bracket, type URL, which is a parameter I want to use, close bracket, as table equals greater than. And you can see at the bottom, no syntax errors have been detected. Doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work, but it's happy with what I've written. So we have converted this into a function. One last step here is you can see the web contents. And in these brackets, we've got the URL that we built from the spreadsheet. Let's delete all of that and type URL. So the parameter I created as a table, we're going to put in those brackets and we're going to feed it the URLs from our spreadsheet table. If I click done, it's now a function. Prompts me to enter the parameter. So I could type a year right now and that should go and fetch the data for that year. But I don't just want one year, I want to feed it all the ones from the table. Let me just change the name of this query. Not that it's hugely important, doesn't really affect it working. But I'm going to put fx in front of it to indicate that this is a function. And I'm going to press my close and load button. And it will now load it as a connection only. You can see on the right hand side, it's now a connection only. It's a function. And that information on the table has rightly disappeared. OK, now I'm clicking inside my table because I now want to load that as a query. Data from table range. Query editor opens. Got the year, got the URL. Now I want to click on my URL column. And after that, I'm going to add a custom column. Here's our custom column step. Let's give it a name. Going to call it Fetch Movies. Excellent. And the formula, nice and easy, equals FX Movies. I'm referencing the function. Open bracket. URL. Close bracket. Feed that function the URL. Now, when I say URL here, because I know I mentioned it a few times, we're now talking about the column on the table, the information in that column. Click OK. Information for data privacy. Let's continue and walk through these steps. Ignore the privacy level. Let's save this. Any minute, here we go. We have ourselves a column fetch movies. Now, remembering the function, as table. So these are tables for each year. If I click the button at the top to expand this and remove the checkbox to keep the original column name as prefix. Very unusual for people to need that. Very few instances. Which columns do we want? I'm going to leave it as all of them. But you can easily exclude or add whichever columns you want from that table right now. If I click OK, wow, look at that. Every single year, 
Now, once again, we have the opportunity to make more changes and maybe one of them is to get rid of this URL. I don't care about the URL. I needed it in order to fetch the data, but I don't need it in the finished result. I do want the year though, because in the box office mojo data, they have the week, but they don't mention the year. So another good thing about us building that table to begin with is that I now have the year in our data. And I'm quite happy having them as separate columns. You can even combine them right now if you wanted to. That is exactly what I want though. So I'm really happy. I'm just going to go and load that in. Close and load to existing worksheet. Let's put it where the other one was. Click OK. It's loading them up on the right hand side. There we go. 235 rows of data from different pages of that website. And if I open this up and ran it next week, the week after the week after, this will continue to do its job. Just as a brief demonstration of that, because I don't want to wait a week in order to refresh this, I'm going to enter 2014, maybe one extra year. As I press enter, table expands, formula runs down it. Data tab, refresh all. Here we go, look at it loading on the right hand side. 287 rows of data. Let's scroll down, where's my 2014? Oh, there it is, all the 2014 data. So, here we have a query importing data from multiple pages. It did use that consistency of the URL, which is important. You never really know, unless you have control over it, the, the structure of these web pages and the structure of the URLs. But as long as there's that consistency, we can import these pretty easily using Power Query. Thank you for watching. I hope you find this video useful. Please check out some of our other video tutorials on our YouTube channel and come check us out at computergaga.com.